the Euclid Space Telescope launched on July 1st, 2023, and is the brand new European Space Agency telescope that will study the dark universe over the next six years. Before it begins surveying the sky properly, we have a lot of testing and commissioning to do to make sure that the telescope is in focus and everything is working well after its launch on the Falcon 9 rocket. What we do have right now is the very first images from the telescope. We have first light. Let's look at these images, what we can see in them and what the telescope will ultimately go on to do. Before we start properly, just a disclaimer that I am actually working on this mission. I'm being very careful to only say things that have been publicly released, but I'm not making this video as part of my job or on behalf of ESA or anything like that. This is just me doing this for the channel. With that out of the way, let's dive into the first images from Euclid. The telescope has now arrived into its orbit around the L2 point in space. 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. It will eventually create the largest 3D map of the universe ever and help us better understand dark energy and dark matter in the process. These first images are just a snapshot of what it's capable of, but they represent an important milestone for Euclid. There are two instruments on Euclid, a visible light imager called VIS and a near-infrared imager and spectrograph called NISP. We have an image from both of these images to see here, along with a spectrum from the NISP spectrograph too. Let's start with the VIS image though. Everything shown off today is for engineering and commissioning purposes. We've already made sure everything is working properly and is in focus, but these first images haven't yet been stacked or cleaned up at all. So there are a few things going on here that we won't see in future images. First of all, let's just appreciate how beautiful this is. It's a visible light image, so it's pretty much how our eyes would really see the universe. On the left, we have a 6x6 six six array of images, each then made up of four panels. This is the layout of Viz, 36 detectors arranged just like this, and then it will slowly dither across the sky to fill in the gaps between the detectors. On the right, we have a zoom in of one of these images, so let's focus on that here. But feel free to zoom in on the other panels on the left, and let me know if you can spot anything that excites you. Like all telescopes, Euclid creates diffraction spikes around particularly bright objects. We get six spikes for Euclid, mostly caused by the struts that hold the secondary mirror in place. There are three struts, and this gives us six spikes. For more details on diffraction spikes and exactly what causes them, you can check out this other video I made talking about the JWST spikes. In this image, anything that comes with diffraction spikes is a star in our own galaxy, but we can also see a few galaxies beyond the Milky Way in this image too. For example, there is a beautiful face-on galaxy right here, and over here we can see one edge-on instead. There's also a denser collection of stars as well. Beyond the gorgeous cosmic objects that we can see, there are also a lot of things visible that aren't actually real. Like I said, this is an engineering image that will help us properly calibrate and commission the telescope. And these images haven't had any strange artifacts removed yet. To start off, there are streaky lines all over the image. These aren't comets or anything like that, but they're actually caused by cosmic rays hitting the telescope detectors while it's imaging the sky. They impart some or all of their high energy into the detector, sort of tricking it into thinking it received photons from real objects. The longer the streak, the more glancing the angle that they hit the detector. At. There's also this ghostly donut over here. This is caused by light from other bright objects in the image reflecting around the Euclid detectors, and some of it hits the Viz detectors. This causes a smeared out ghost to appear. This one is actually caused by the bright star over here. But these types of artifacts will be cleaned up from proper Euclid images, as they should be quite straightforward to identify and remove. Interestingly, the dot in the center of the ghost is not part of the artifact. It's actually an unrelated object in the image. Now, let's turn our attention to the two NISP images we got to see. Starting with this one from the Near Infrared Imager. On the left is the 4x4 array of detectors that the instrument has, which of course is different to the 6x6 array of Viz. Again, on the right we have a zoom in of one of those images. We can see the same six pointed spikes around the stars in the image, but the most eye-catching thing here is this beautiful face-on galaxy. The clarity is really amazing, and we can already see spiral arms and a bar through the center of the galaxy, even at this early stage of commissioning. Over here is another galaxy, although we can't yet make out any structure to this one. 
You might notice that the NISP image has fewer cosmic ray streaks than the VIS one had, and you'd be totally right to notice this. The NISP detectors have much thinner active layers that detect photons, and so the probability that cosmic rays hit it is actually much lower. Many cosmic rays may hit it perpendicularly and show up as single points, but relatively few glance across the detectors to give extended streaks. There are a few other artifacts visible in the image too, such as this odd looking apparition, or these faint streaks here. These can be caused by things like dark current or persistence charge, but again will be removed or mitigated for when Euclid starts its survey. I'll leave a link or two in the description below if you want to read a bit more about these things though. Finally, onto the NISP spectrum we got to see. This looks very different to the image, because it's spreading out the light it receives from each object into its component wavelengths, and so each vertical streak here corresponds to one object in the image. This image actually covers the same area of sky as the zoom-ins that we saw earlier, which is about 1 14th of the size of the full moon as we see it. The full arrays cover about 2.5 times the area of the full moon, meaning Euclid can actually image quite a lot of the sky at the same time. Each streak should also come with a snow person, or peanut too. This is a less spread out version of the same spectrum of the same objects. These peanuts aren't really used for science very often, but I think it's cool to be able to connect these things together. But it's the streaks here that are the useful things. This one we've been looking at here is for something compact like a star, but this one is for something wider like a galaxy. The spectral streak should appear just as wide as the actual object would in a proper image. Once again, there are also a few cosmic rays visible like this streak here. Also, any single points of light in the image are likely artifacts too, since any real objects should get their light spread into streaks. These dots may be cosmic rays hitting the detectors head on, or some other pixel specific effect that will have to be removed or averaged out when the science begins. The other types of artifacts are bigger points like this that we call snowballs. These are again caused by something in the detectors themselves, and they aren't real cosmic objects, but they will be removed in future images. Overall, these images are incredibly exciting. There are now a few more commissioning steps to do, and then an eight-week phase of performance verification will begin. This involves checking that every instrument and setup on the telescope is working as planned, and then it can finally begin its massive survey of the sky for the next six years. This isn't a telescope like Hubble or JWST that you can apply for time on to image whatever you like. Euclid has one mission, and that is to map over a billion galaxies to help us understand the dark universe. Please leave me any questions you have in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!